Hi everyone, welcome back. It's a horrible rainy day in Paris, so it's a perfect opportunity to stay inside and get stuck into DaVinci Resolve 16's new cut page, which is radically different than the edit page, but could potentially speed up your workflow. So if you are a DaVinci Resolve user or you're considering DaVinci Resolve, this video could be for you if you would like to learn how to edit quickly in DaVinci Resolve. Now, this could be a little bit of a long video, so I've got a coffee. You may wanna grab a coffee, so if you do, hit the pause button, come right back, and we'll get stuck right into it. Okay, let's launch Resolve and get into the new Resolve 16 cut page. So the new cut page is designed for fast turnaround workflows. This is how it's being advertised by DaVinci Resolve. So after DaVinci Resolve 16 has loaded, actually the most important thing that you need to do is set up your project. Don't just go straight into the cut window and start importing footage and chucking it down. That's a big mistake. No one really talks about this. You actually need to set up your project and your project settings first. This is the most important thing to do. So skipping this step could actually cause you problems later on down the line in your project management. It is imperative to do this step first. Down in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a little gear wheel. It's next to the little house on the bottom. And if you hover over it with your mouse, it will say project settings. Just click that and then all of your project settings will come up. The next tab down is your master settings. Really all you need to be looking at unless you're shooting in camera raw is your master settings and your capture and playback settings. These are the two most important ones that you need to adjust. What you need to do in your playback monitoring is change the frame rate to your base frame rate, which is the frame rate that you've shot at. So if you're in the States, it might be 23.98 or 24 frames per second or 29.98 or 30 frames per second. And if you're in Europe or Australia or some parts of Asia, then it will be 24p if you're shooting for film and 25p if you're shooting for broadcast. So you just need to make sure that your timeline rate and your playback rate match. And then change the video monitoring setting to match those two settings so that you don't have any conflict errors or you don't produce any conflict errors uh, through whatever system that you're using. Click the save button and away you go. And now we can actually start looking at the cut page. To understand the cut page, you kind of need to understand a little bit of Blackmagic Design's philosophy on why they've added this into what you would already consider one of the best industry post-production edit tools out on the market being DaVinci Resolve. So the philosophy is, is that the cut page is going to introduce powerful, innovative new tools that will help you work more quickly. So the whole premise behind the cut page is speed. They want you to be able to import your footage, cut it quick, add all the effects that you want, the titles, everything, and then be able to export it directly to say, your social media account like YouTube or Instagram or wherever it is that you wanna be posting material. Let's have a look at the cut page and how they've actually changed it so that the GUI actually works better for smaller monitors and is better for people that are kind of on the go. When I use the edit page, I spread it out over two monitors. I like to have a lot of real estate when, I, when I'm working, and that's only because the way the bins are laid out in Resolve, but that's what works for me, and I can edit pretty quickly in Resolve, so I'm wondering exactly how much faster this is going to help me actually edit. So in the upper left is the media pool where all the source clips are organized. This area can also show you your transitions, titles, and effects. On the right is the viewer which switches between showing you your source clips and or your timeline. Along the bottom is a new innovative dual timeline. The upper timeline is an active live timeline of the entire program, while a detailed area is displayed in the lower timeline. So it's kind of like looking at an overarching view of your entire timeline, and then like a magnified view of where you are actually uh, editing at that certain point. So you can actually use the top timeline to jump around very quickly, drag clips very quickly to anywhere in the timeline that you want, while still focusing and having like a macro control over your actual edit down to the frame in the bottom timeline. Now, the other thing that they've improved is that importing clips or complete folders of clips can now be done from a right of the cut page. And those folders are automatically placed into bins and all of these bins are accessible without any wasted space. Clips can be displayed in three ways as thumbnails. 
in a list view or a new clip view, which is very much like Final Cut Pro X, as I said before. But it, but it shows the clip and the metadata, which is a bit of a bonus. So when you hover your mouse over the clip, it automatically displays in the viewer. So as you put your show together, the upper timeline will show you the entire program so you can quickly move through the program allowing you to move from the start to the end with ease. But it can also be used for way more than just moving around the project as it is still an active timeline. So what they've done is they've given you the ability to move around without zooming in or out or scrolling up or down in your timeline. This is a fantastic feature and is something that annoyed the hell out of me in the edit page. You can even trim clips directly in the live active timeline. You can even set in and out points in the source viewer and the new scratch trim buttons let you trim with more precision because the length of the clip becomes irrelevant. The tool will always behave the same way as you move the mouse and trim consistently. The cut page still features the standard editing features that you would expect, but the difference is the editing on the cut page is intelligent with smart tools like Smart Insert. Linked audio and video clips appear as a single clip to reduce visual clutter, and the other edit types make it easy to append a clip to the end of the timeline. The ripple overwrite edits replace a clip of one length with a clip of another length in the timeline without leaving any frame gaps. So it's all about speed, 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 speed. The close-up edit is an overwrite edit that makes a two-time zoom uh, of the clip and places it above the clip in the timeline. You can also create cutaways by adding another video above the main video in the timeline. Source overwrite is perfect for making frame accurate cutaways. Just open the clip in the viewer, hit the F key to match frame with the clip in the timeline based on time code. Now just mark the duration of the clip and then this source overwrite button and the new cutaway shot will be placed on top of the main edit track and because it's time code based, the audio should automatically be in sync so you don't have to re-sync it if you're using this tool. The lower timeline utilizes the edit page tools in a very similar way. You can use the slip tool icon to slip through clips on the timeline to, just, to adjust their in and out points. The trim tool works the same way by clicking and dragging on the head or tail of a clip to amend the clip's length. And another great feature is the ability to easily move clips around the entire timeline. For example, say, if you wanna grab a clip from here and move it all the way to the end of the timeline over there, I can now easily select that clip, drag it and drop it into the upper timeline, which I was not able to do before in the edit page. This is something that I actually do all the time. Even if I just wanna just grab a clip because I wanna pu push it out of the way so that I can just drag all my other clips down the timeline and keep that select on the timeline for later use without having to go refind it in the clips bin. Now, if you're using cross dissolves or transitions, uh, you can apply and modify the duration as well directly inside the cut page. This means that there are three separate trim editors visible at all times. A coarse trim editor in the upper timeline, perfect for large scale trimming, more accurate trimming control over the lower timeline and a frame accurate AB graphical trimmer in the viewer. The cut dissolve and smooth cut buttons allow you to quickly switch an edit point to between the most common transitions. Just move near a cut and click to switch to a dissolve. You can then change the duration of the dissolve in the lower timeline or the more frame accurate viewer. For jump cuts created when editing, you can switch to the smooth cut transition tool and seamlessly blend the jump cut so it appears as one continuous shot. I have to use this a lot because I can't seem to be able to string a sentence together very often. I just did it again. I forgot what I was going to say. To switch a transition back to a straight cut, just click the button and it lets you take out the transition easily as, as easily as adding one. Right clicking over the playhead in the lower timeline opens a simple menu. You can select all of the clips before the playhead or all of the clips behind the playhead or cut any selected clip. Now, that's huge because this is something that I was having a lot of trouble with in the edit page. I was very used to the double arrows that you have in Final Cut Pro or Premiere, where you just click any clip in the timeline and it automatically selects everything down the timeline. So I'm glad that they've actually added this feature as well as 
the ability to quickly scrub through clips using a new tape button to allow you to look at media quickly as, as quickly as you want to view it. Once you set in and out points in Resolve now, you'll be able to reorganize the tape so it becomes even easier to look at in a selected source range of clips. And any clip that you stop on will be automatically highlighted in the viewer in its respective bin. When working with clips that you didn't shoot, the fast review feature gives you a way to know the material quickly before you begin editing. Resolve will automatically speed up the footage and slow it down in playback depending on the length of the clips. All the clips are played back faster, but the shorter clips will be slowed down so you actually have time to see them and not have them just skipped over. The cut page puts all of the controls in one strip below the viewer, so you get your transform tools for resizing shots, cropping tools, audio level adjustments, retime tools for fast and slow motion, or ramping effects. Stabilization to get rid of all that pesky camera shake, as well as controls for dynamic zoom, audio and video effects, and text all in one spot. So there's no more jumping in and out of windows to select things, it's just all there at a click of a button so that there's less movement of the mouse. And if you were then to use this with their new keyboard, you're probably gonna find that your workflow will speed up exponentially. You'll find in the titles library, professionally designed 2 and 3D titles that can be easily added to the timeline or customized to add some more flash to your project. The cut page also has a wide range of unique and colorful resolve effects like contrast pop, blur, and light reflections. To be honest, I don't know how much you'd be using these. They're a bit gimmicky, and I just can't see anybody really using these in a professional sense or in a YouTube or kind of vlogging sense. They're a bit gross, to tell you the truth. Now, when you're ready to share your project, again, like I said at the start, you can do a quick export and render directly to your social media on YouTube or Vimeo. And I can probably say down the track, they'll probably add more places where you can directly publish to. In my opinion, the cut page would be great if you needed to work fast. With a single click, you can just switch to the full edit page if you need to, if you need to do more complex edits. It just really depends on the project. If it's something for YouTube, you may be able to get away with just importing the footage, cutting it in, res in the edit page, in Resolve 16 and then just outputting it straight to YouTube. So that's a concise look guys of the new edit page and the tools that are embedded inside that new cut page in DaVinci Resolve 16. Now, I believe that this is definitely going to speed up your workflow. Personally, I don't think I'll be using the cut page. I've already got my workflow and the, the speed at which I edit sorted out on the edit page which I'll go into in another video in the coming days, because I can show you ways to edit in the edit page with the more complex tools uh, in a fashion where you can actually edit as quickly as what you, they're saying you can in the cut page. The only thing that I can really see that is going to speed up your workflow in the edit page is the ability to drag and drop clips from one timeline view into your other timeline view and very quickly drop them in. To me, that's what I think is the fastest way. The features that they've added in the cut page are very Final Cut Pro 10. I don't use Final Cut Pro because of the layout and the way that it edits, which is the exact reason why I won't use the cut page in Resolve. You may be a Final Cut Pro user and this may be a perfect way for you to step into DaVinci Resolve because you understand the interface. I'm a little bit of an old school editor and I like the, the older interface, which is the, the edit page because I like to use the, the more complex tools. And I think that if you do start using Resolve, you will quickly move from the cut page to the edit page if you're learning Resolve because you just have more control. And when editing, sometimes speed, yes, speed is important because time is money, but so is accuracy. So, I think the flexibility of the edit page, and Blackmagic Design says this themselves, the edit page is far more powerful than the cut page. The cut page really is for fast turnaround stuff. But if you know what you're doing and you learn the edit page properly, you should be able to edit as quick in the edit page as the cut page. So that's my thoughts on the new 
cut page and edit pages in DaVinci Resolve 16. I'd really like to know what your experience has been with Resolve, whether you use Resolve or whether you use Premiere or whether you use Final Cut Pro. It doesn't really matter to me which one you use as long as they work for you. That's the main thing. All programs aside, editing is a skill like cinematography that when you master it, you can uh, start to deliver fantastic productions. It doesn't really matter the software. But if I had a choice between Final Cut Pro, which is an outright purchase, Creative Cloud Premiere, which is an ongoing purchase, and DaVinci Resolve, I would choose DaVinci Resolve because it has a lot more inside the actual studio package than the other two for one single price. And if you are an emerging filmmaker or you are an indie filmmaker, price is important. And this is why Resolve is such a good program for the indie market out there and the YouTube market out there. As I said, that's it for today. That was a bit of a long winded wrap up. I'd love to hear your thoughts and I will see you very soon. Bye for now.